Hello and welcome or welcome back to the Dandelion Diaries. So in this video, I kind of hinted about this in one of my previous videos about setting up a week size notebook from Sterling Inc. like a bullet journal. And that's what this video is kind of going to be. So I haven't really full on gone in and done this yet. This video might be two parts, so stay tuned. I'll probably section this off, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a walkthrough of what I'm thinking about doing for this bullet journal. So I have the 520 page gilded Sterling ink notebook in black and I have a clear cover on cover on it. So I apologize for the glare, but I, it was hard getting these covers on, so I'm not about to just take them off. And if the binding is anything like the common planner, I want to be as gentle with the binding as I can. So I'm not going to be taking it in and out or anything like that. But I went ahead and set up a kind of section for each month, week, and how I want this to be laid out. And I also numbered all of the pages, at least the odd numbers, so I can see like how I would want to index things and I would want the, the notebook to be numbered anyways. So in the beginning, open it up right, this would be just decoration pages. I don't know if I would do anything here just because this is really an awkward page because it's stuck to this uh, page here. But the first section, obviously, since it is a bullet journal for me, would be an index and this would be where I would list out everything. I did want to give myself a couple of pages for that just in case I needed more space because I always end up needing more space. Um, so that, there's that. The next thing I would want to do is a two page spread for a future log or a year at a glance, kind of mirroring what a Hobonichi Weeks looks like. So if I pull out my garden planner here, kind of like this where it would only be one year though. I wouldn't want all three. I would just do like six months on one side and six months on the other. And I would probably have little note sections like this under each month, but I haven't really given it too much thought yet. I wanna play around with it a little bit more just to see how I'm feeling. The next section I would do is the yearly tracker page. I don't like how in the regular Hobonichi weeks, it's all smooshed onto a two page spread. So I have like a half inch of room to write stuff down on each day or use it for whatever. So I want to separate it out to where I have two months per page, similar to how the A6 Hobonichi is. Um, I don't have one of those for reference this year, unfortunately, but they have two months per page and I like that a little bit better. So I have more room to either do tracker things or any kind of, you know, whatever I wanna do. Since I already have an index in the front, I'd probably use it as a tracker. That's my plan on using it as a tracker. If I set this up, like I said, wait for part two. Um, it would be my work bullet journal, so y'all wouldn't really get to see what happens in here. So I'm just kind of spitting out ideas of what could possibly be. But like I said, two per page, so that would be enough pages there. And then I would begin straight into the monthlies. I know with bullet journals, a lot of people like to do a lot of fun trackers and um, reading journals or any kind of interesting spreads for me my bullet journal is pretty functional so i always try to put everything functional first and then at the back of the journal depending on how many pages i have left is where i would do any kind of fun spreads or trackers so beginning with month one whatever that month may be this would be like the monthly cover page where i draw out the month name and the theme or whatever it is i choose and then on this other page on the left side, I would have my goals for that month and then a review at the bottom. So if you've watched my May flip through video, I kind of go over how I do a goals and review for every month. And I honestly do it regardless of if it's personal or work because work goals should be separate from personal goals in my opinion. <laughs> so if I use this as a work bujo, that's what I would use it for. Then I would move into a two page monthly spread, very similar to how the Hobonichi Weeks looks. For example, here's an un one that's not done. So like the two page like this where the boxes are a little bit larger and I probably would keep the same square, pa square space to leave room over here and over here just for any kind of notes or whatever it is I'm tracking. Then we would move straight into the weekly pages. And I want to keep the same layout as the weeks because I really like having the week on one side and then the note page on the other, but different than the weeks, I want to put notes pages slash 
daily log pages right after the week because I don't like having to flip after like you're in the week you're on right so like this is this week we're in this week and then I have to go all the way back here to the notes pages to write down my daily logs or in this case my weekly logs so I would rather have just everything be kind of within that same section so with this I'd have the week on this page the notes for that week or to list whatever and then this is where my daily logs would be so I left it to where I could get half a page per day because I'm already gonna have a daily journal and this is like work related, right? So I would mainly just be using this as like a daily log for any kind of notes I need to take, any kind of extra task list that wouldn't fit in my weekly box, um, drawings, doodles, creative ideas, whatever. So it's two per page. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then this bottom section, is where I want to do a weekly review for the week. So this is where I would want to update like my totals for subscribers on my YouTube channel, any kind of Instagram stats I have. If I had X number of deliveries this week, X number of, you know, sales, whatever it may be, this is where I would be tracking that week's review in like statistic format. And so I wanted to make sure I had kind of eight sections versus seven. So I have that space but then it would move on into the next week. So similar to how the Hobonichi weeks again is laid out where it has the weeks on this side, the task list on this side, but with the daily log literally right behind it. So that way I don't have to flip all the way to the back to get, you know, to my notes pages or whatever I'm writing down for that week. That being said, I counted out based on 2024, because that's when I would likely use this, when each of the weeks and months would be in this journal essentially and how it would look and this is a whole year right here so i still have all of this as extra notes pages as um, art pages creativity pages whatever so i can fit a whole year in here which is crazy to me and still have all of these pages so there's 520 pages in this book this is page 379 so let's do some math really quick and i'm going to use my phone because i'm not in the mood to do math in my head right now so 520 minus 379 is 141 pages so i have 141 pages like can you see that i don't know if you'll be able to see with my phone glare but 141 pages of notes that I can use in here. So if I wanted to do like monthly sales tracking, if I wanted to do like a section just for my, you know, creative ideas, if I wanted to have a section for bills, payments, spending, anything like that, I have plenty of room in the back. So that's pretty much the idea that I'm going for right now. If I set this up, like I said, there will be a part two to this video, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of what it would look like if you were to make a bullet journal out of the 520 page notebooks from Sterling Inc. Okay, so this is part two of this video. Um, I did go ahead and decide I am going to fill it out for you guys. So if you're interested in just the flip through, there's actually part three. So go to part three if you wanna see the finished flip through of how this looks, but I'm gonna go ahead and get started with drawing all of this out. I'm gonna keep it very minimal just because I am going to be using this for next year. And if I do too much in it now, I'm not gonna to wanna to use it, but I'm going to basically draw out all of the spreads in a sense. So like this page, I'll write index at the top, write everything down. And then for the weeks, I'll draw out the weeks side. And then for the months, the grid spaces as well. So if you're interested in that, this is going to be like a time lapse. I'll probably have to do a little bit of a voiceover and then some music. So let's get into this. All right. Well, hello. This is voiceover Danielle. I just kind of wanted to tell you guys what I'm doing as I'm doing it on screen, even though it's super fast. So in the beginning, I'm setting up my index pages and I just used a gray fine liner for that to kind of delineate some lines. And then I moved straight into the future log. 
As I said, this is very functional for me. I'm not doing a whole lot of decorating or anything right now. It's just function. And my new kitten, Hades, decided to say hi. But I ended up adding two dots on the page to kind of split the page in half. Most of the Sterling Ink notebooks have that delineating dot, but this book did not, which is kind of interesting to me. So hopefully future notebooks will have these. They're very handy. I then kind of spaced out my six months on each page, January through June on one side, and then July through December on the other. When I was writing out the weekdays and the um, like days of the month, I ended up pulling out my old or my current Hobonichi weeks as a reference just so I could make sure I had all of my dates correct. I didn't want to have to redate anything and I didn't want it to have to be any kind of mismatch of stuff. I ended up leaving two squares on each side of the months and three squares on one side on like because the page is not even and I talk about this in the in the flip through as well but it doesn't have 24 squares it has 23 squares so that one square difference makes everything a little bit off center which is slightly annoying especially for perfectionist kind of mindset but it ended up being okay and it looked fine at the end result and so I can't complain too much just because it's one square. I then used my UniJetStream ballpoint pen in 0.38 to write out all of the dates. So I had the fine liner in black in 02 for the weekdays and then the uh, ballpoint pen and that is specifically because I'm going to be using dot markers or highlighters on top of these dates later on and the ballpoint pen does not smear on the Tomoe River paper like the other pens do whenever you mark on top of them. I then realized I messed up October and I had to white it out and luckily the common planner or sterling ink paper is pretty white so it's not super noticeable um, though pink sticky note on the back makes it a little bit more noticeable than it actually is but it was it ended up looking just fine at the end. I then went ahead and moved straight into my tracker pages. As I talked about in the beginning of this video part one, I want to do two months per page. And again, because of that very annoying odd squared paper, um, so since instead of 24, it has the 23, one column is smaller than the other and it's just really irritating to me and you'll probably notice me recount all of the squares so many times because I was trying to figure out where my math was going wrong and it, it just ended up one squares or one column is going to be smaller than the other column and I'm going to have to deal with it. <laughs> But all of the delineating lines I'm using is from that Statler light gray fine liner. And then the bolder black uh, writing is from a Ritech fine liner in 02. So I mainly just used the same pens over and over again because I wanted it to look cohesive. But I also didn't want to have it be too decorated right out the bat. I have an issue if I go into a planner at the beginning of the year and it's already pretty much done for, like it's already has a theme or something. I, I am reluctant to use it because I don't know if I agree with that theme at that time or whatever. But here I'm just continuing through those pages, making sure that I have them all kind of evenly spaced or as evenly spaced as I can get them. I did end up using my Hobie G Weeks um, as like a backing so I could write on the front cover because since this is the beginning of the notebook and it's a thick notebook because it's 520 pages, it's a little awkward to write on with the cover slanting all the way down. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use the top part of this section for yet, but I'm really interested to see how it turns out. I then flipped into the goals page monthlies so I'm not gonna do anything there. And then I moved straight into the monthly two page spread. So I didn't wanna do anything for like my cover page or my goal pages yet, just cause I'm not ready to use this planner as it is for 2024. And the filming of this video is in June of 2023. So not necessarily a good idea to go ahead and film it right now. 
When I was counting out the squares for the two-page monthly spread, I ran into the same problem as I had before in every spread, is that there wasn't an even number of boxes. So I ended up making the monthly column on the left side five squares, and then I tried to make each weekly six by six. It worked out great for the left page, so Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, but when I started working on the right page, I ran into the problem of the five squares. But before that, I had to correct my extra lines at the bottom, and so I just used a Uniball Signo in white in the broad, I think it's like a 0.5 uh, size nib on that pen, but I just went over my lines and just to make them a little bit lighter, not necessarily that I was trying to erase them, I just didn't want them to be as bold. But once we got to the right side, you see that my Sunday boxes are squished because I only had five spaces left. Moving on into the weekly pages, I wanted to mirror almost exactly the way Hobonichi Weeks looks. I think it is very functional in how you can write everything on one side for your weekly events or tasks, and then on the other side you have a notes page. So I just wanted to make this very bare bones in creating a weekly spread. And since January actually begins on a Monday, it's kind of cool that I'm going to be able to start this brand new book on the first of a first of a first, which is really satisfying. After setting up the first week, I go into the daily logs where I don't really do anything there. I just wanted to leave that space blank for now because when I use the planner later, I'll probably end up decorating those pages however I want. But I did end up setting the rest of the weeks um, for January, which would be week one, two, three, four, and five. Once I had finished setting up all of the weeks, I was ready to go back to the front and start like titling everything. So I titled my index using a Tombow Fudunosuke brush pen in the soft tip. And then when it came time to do the future log or year at a glance page, I went ahead and used a Uniball signal in a Uniball signal in gold, but I wanted to letter out in pencil to make sure my spacing would look okay since I was going to be using a gold color, which is going to be very stand out and the page is already off center as it is because of that off grid space. And I didn't want it to be even more off center with the months not centered on top of their weekdays. Later on, after everything has dried down, probably for a couple of days, honestly, I'll go back in and I'll erase my pencil marks. But if you're familiar with Tomoe River paper, the dry time is very slow because it is very lightweight paper and it's coated. So ink stands on top and dries down and shows all of its properties, but you have to wait a long time for it to dry before you can do anything on top of it. Then moving on into my tracker pages, I went ahead and numbered out one through 31 on both pages and then followed with the days of the week for each month. So January being that first box, February second box, March, April, so on and so forth. You'll probably see me go in a few times with that white pen just because I do mess up. I mean, doing this all at once can be a little tedious and especially if you're tired at the end of the day, then it, you know, you make mistakes. Luckily with this paper, it does take white out pretty well, so I don't have to worry about any kind of major errors that I need to correct. Again, for the headings, I wanted to use that gold pen because I wanted it to look cohesive throughout the book, but instead of doing a script style, I went ahead and just lettered it in a print font. I think it turned out really nice and I like that the month is bold and it's not specific to any color. It is just kind of a foily gold which will match anything that I want to put down on the paper later. And I just continued with the same, you know, bolder days or bolder numbers, so one through 31, and then the ballpoint pen for the weekdays, Monday through Sunday. And I just continued that again through all four months on these pages.
and you'll probably see me slip in a piece of notebook paper just to make sure that nothing is bleeding through on either side as the pages dry with that ink on it. And for the last two pages of months, again, it's just the same thing where I use that Boulder 02 fine liner in black and then a ballpoint pen for the days of the week. And then that gold Sino Signo pen, Uniball Signo for the monthly headers. Moving on into the monthly pages, I didn't want to do anything except for write out the days of the week or the days of the month in this case because I want to leave this very plain for when I move into it in January and I'm not worried about any kind of color schemes clashing with what I want to do. For the remaining squares, I did use that gray fine liner to write in the days of February just so that way it wouldn't be blank squares. I then moved on to the weeks using that fine liner and wrote out all of the days of the week, but I wanted to keep it very simple and left it at that again because I'm not ready to move all the way in. Okay, so we have finished with part one, kind of like the example of what I set up in general. Part two is the time lapse of me actually setting up the first month and like the early pages in this book. And now we're on to part three. So part three is going to be basically a flip through of what I did. And I'm just going to tell you now, I did bare bones because this is for 2024 and I'm really not ready to decorate this yet. I'm not really ready to set it up fully, but I wanted to have an idea of how this would look going in because I needed a I needed a bigger planner essentially for my business slash work planner. And with this, I have all these extra notes pages in the back and I'm still able to fit a year's worth of planning essentially in here too. So I could honestly keep going in the back here and just month add month, months to it if I want, which is why I've left a lot of this kind of unset up but I'm still calling this a setup because I did set up the beginning of this planner. But let's just kind of flip through what I did here. So like I said, I'm not decorating any of this yet. I will probably do this a lot closer to 2024. It is only June. Yeah, so the first pages I left blank. So I don't really want to do anything on this page ever because it's that weird page that is connected to the first like cardstock page for binding purposes so we just leave that as usually decoration or like a cover page for the planner i then wanted to put in an index since this is more of a bullet journal style book an index helps me figure out which page i need to get to and if i don't tab this then i know based on the page numbers i put down here where i need to go to find certain information and i did leave myself I think three pages, yeah, three pages for an index, which should be plenty for all of the months and weeks, and then also notes pages in the back. I then went ahead and did a future log slash year at a glance. I ended up using the Uniball Signo Gold Broad, um, I think this is still considered a gel pen. Let me, I'm pretty sure it's a gel pen. Anyways, I did that to letter out the headings of the months. I did leave the pencil markings in here just because I'm not ready to erase it yet. I want it to be really, really dry since this is the really thin Tomoe River paper. It is the new one, but still better safe than sorry. I then took a fine liner. This is in 02 to do the Monday through Sunday. And then I used a ballpoint pen to do all of the days of the week because my plan for this is to go back in with like zig dock markers or highlighter and highlight over it. And if you know Tomoe River paper, even the new one, you can't really highlight over certain pens, but with ballpoint pens, you can highlight over them. I also took a very light gray fine liner. This is from Statler to do the week numbers just slightly to the side so i'll bring this up to you guys so you can kind of see obviously the gold is shiny but you'll see the like little light gray next to the week 
weekday numbers so that way I can see which week I'm on whenever I'm dotting in here or whatever. And I did end up messing up October, which is kind of funny. If you're interested, go back and watch that. <laughs> The next pages I set up are the yearly tracker pages. That's just what I'm calling them now. I didn't like how in the traditional Hobonichi weeks you have this teeny tiny little space and it's all squished onto two pages. So I made it massive, essentially, almost like the A6 where it's two per. So that way I could have enough space to write down either another kind of index situation here. I may write down the YouTube videos or Instagram posts or Facebook posts. I may write down daily statistics. If I have like certain sales and certain things, then I want to make sure that I'm keeping track of like number of orders, maybe even number of dollars. I haven't really decided what I want to do with this yet. Like I said, this is for 2024. I just wanted to get it kind of pre-set up to see if this would work out for me. And so far, I'm going to think it is going to work, but We'll, get, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But here's January through April, May through August, and then September through December. So I did end up leaving a square around the entire box, and that's because when I was sketching this out, this is not even. This has 23 squares, and I thought I had 24. The Hobonichi Weeks, the traditional one, has 24 squares. The Sterling Ink version has 23. So that was kind of annoying. So I ended up having to shave off a square. And then also, instead of putting the dates next to each one like I originally wanted to, it was going to look really weird because one box was going to be shorter than the other box. Needless to say, this worked out fine. It looks okay. But I do have 10 squares by 10 squares for most of the sections. At least on the top, this is 10 by 10. Moving on, this is when I would start my monthly pages. So I didn't want to set this up yet, like I said, because it is for 2024, but this is where my January cover page is going to go, and then this would be my January goal section, and then my January review section. I wasn't ready to decorate, obviously, because it's June, but this is what these pages would be set up for. I then went ahead and did my January month at a glance. So this is the two page spread. I made the boxes smaller than with the Hobonichi weeks. So in the Hobonichi weeks, they are seven squares by six squares. But in the this one, I made them six by six because I don't really need that much room in my, in my monthlies. And I'd rather have this space on the bottom to kind of do you know, any kind of expensing, tr expense tracking or social media stuff, just so I have more space on a monthly page. Again, since this is not 24 squares, my Sunday is squished. So it really does kind of annoy me, but I'm going to get over it. I essentially had to do five squares here and then each one of the Monday through Wednesday essentially is six squares and then Thursday through Saturday is six squares and then Sunday is only five squares. So again, because these are only 23 squares across, I'm not able to give this day the correct number of squares wide. It doesn't look too terrible because it's, it's only one square difference. And I thought about, well, what if I made every single box five squares instead of six squares, but then I would have this awkward like three square side and then two square side. And I just, we're just gonna have a squished month. Since this is the only month I set up, I'll see if I stick with this. I may have to do something different for February. We'll see, but for now, I mean, it doesn't look terrible and I'm gonna roll with it and see how it goes. I then went ahead and set up my weekly pages. I left them very blank because if you've watched any of my, well, if you've watched any, I left them very blank because if you've watched any of my other videos um, about like this was my garden planner, for example, I like to color out the weekdays and I like to add color to the page. So I didn't want to write in Monday through Sun Monday through Sunday here because I'm probably going to end up lettering them in in some kind of color that I like or if I have stickers I want to use. 
I just didn't want to have to write something in and then cover it up later when this is completely blank notebook that I can do whatever I want in. It's not like it's already pre-printed like the Hobonichi is where you kind of have to cover it up or write over it. With this, I have the option to just write it in when I'm ready. So I wanted to leave those blank. But this would be the weekly pages, so I would probably do this similar to what I do now, which is write daily tasks over here and then have a master list or notes page over here depending on what I'm using this for. If I use this for work like I intend to, I will also draw in squares here for my social media stuff and then also um, I'll have a little section at the bottom for like tracking um, like no spends or spending, packages, deliveries, etc. The one thing I did different with this is I wanted to have my daily pages right after my week. So again, with the Hobonichi Weeks, you have the Weeks page, and then if you wanted to add any kind of notes, you have to go all the way to the back where all the notes pages are to fill anything out. So usually I, this is my garden planner, and I do a weekly diary or weekly journal of what happened for my garden. I don't have room on the notes page. I've tried it, it didn't work out. But if I had the pages directly after the week, it would be so much more cohesive in my mind and I wouldn't have to flip all the way to the back to get to those pages or have a separate place where I index that. It's just all kind of chronologically in order, which is what I wanted. So I left myself four pages, so one, two, three, four. And my plan with this is to have half a page per day. So like this would be Sunday, Saturday and then Sunday up here. And then this bottom section would be my weekly review. I know it's kind of hard to visualize since I left it all blank, but when I get to this in January or December when I start setting it up, I will try to show you guys so that way you have kind of more of a visual idea of what I'm going for. But I did want to just note that I am leaving space for daily pages after my weeks versus having all of the weeks smushed together and all of the notes pages in the back. Again, this would be like week two, the daily pages for week two, week three, the daily pages for week three, week four, and then the daily pages for week four, week five, and then the daily pages for week five, and you kind of get the idea. Since week five is the end of January, I didn't want to set up anything else yet, so the rest of this book is pretty much just sticky noted out where everything would be laid out in general, and then when I got to the end of December, like the December dailies, this would be my first notes page, like actual notes notes page. If I wanted to use the notes page for anything else other than notes, I could set up trackers back here, I could set up future months, like if I wanted to keep using this until I just ran out of notebook, like in typical bullet journals, I would just start setting up January again for 2025 and keep going from there. I didn't want to do that because I do think I will be using these notes pages for either you know, any kind of business notes I need to take, any kind of video notes, or really whatever I need to use it for, for business or work, just a section that I have plenty of pages for. And since there are 520 pages in this book, and I fit a whole year on essentially 378 pages with, you know, the beginning sections, I still have quite a few pages that I can use for notes and I still have quite a few pages that I could keep planning in if I needed to. So if you were looking at getting a Sterling Inc. Weeks notebook to do this, I highly recommend the 520 page because you can fit so much in here. I will say I'm not going to be stickering this a whole lot or adding a ton of washi tape or ephemera or anything since it is more of my work planner. I don't usually decorate it very heavily because it's for work, <laughs> like it, it's functional more than anything else. I'll probably end up drawing in it more than I would add stickers. And so I'm not worried about the binding, I'm not worried about this bulking out. I mean with the sticky notes in here right now it's kind of bulky, but since I'm not going to be adding all that in here it won't be a problem. If you were to do that with yours. 
I would probably go with the smaller books and maybe have two of them. So like the 260 page books and have two of those, like one for each half of the year. I know in 2024, Sterling Inc. is going to come out with planners in all the size of the notebooks that she offers. When those drop, we'll see what happens. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the setup I did with this. At least going into next year, I have an idea that this planner or bullet journal, in a sense, will work for what I need it to. And I won't have to purchase a Hobonichi Weeks Mega or anything else since I already have this ready to go. That is all I am going to leave at for this video. Um, let me know about what you think of this in the comments. I know it's pretty bare bones, but I wanted to just get it out there so you guys could see that it could work. If you wanted to set it up as a bullet journal, it does work for sure. But let me know what you think in the comments. If you're interested in more content from me, I do have an Instagram and I actually did do another poll for this video if you wanted to see the full setup or just the walkthrough and the votes, you know, kind of tell you what to do in that situation and it was definitely the full setup. But I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I love your support. We are almost to a thousand subscribers and I'm super excited. So be prepared for a giveaway coming soon. But again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.